there are people who operate in their everyday life with God through their imagination, through their memory, through their understanding. And all of this is a filter when they try to hear from God. It is filtered through the flesh. The flesh reaches out because the Bible says you're not tempted by the devil. You're not tempted by God. You're not tempted anything else but the lust of your own heart, which is flesh. Okay? And the imagination works with the heart. So he says and talks about the evil imagination of the heart. And that evil imagination is connected to a lot of things that that spiritually can mess you up if you do not die to self and give up what you think what you feel what you believe and that is uh, has a lot to do with why god made it so forgiveness is a freedom that you don't hold anybody responsible for anything if you're not called to it listen to what i'm going to tell you there are people who are in authority that are called and work according to their calling. So you can't judge them to be on the level of understanding that you're at. You can't touch them. You need to leave those that are called to stand up and tell the truth uh, in certain against sin, actually, and against uh, wickedness, uh, lies, deception, all of that. They're called to it. They've been trained from the time they were little to be who they are. And that is uh, something that's none of your business. Your, your job is first between you and God. And it is first to make sure that your imagination, your memories, your flesh, your feelings, your emotions, all of that does not incorporate into your spiritual being and and you get there's so much to it in dying to self okay so but it's an easy everyday thing if you walk in the spirit and not after the flesh you can deny yourself one day at a time this is why he told you, don't think about yesterday. Don't go there and think so-and-so has to pay and go, don't go there and think you're going to pay. Don't, don't let your thinking go there. It's gone. I get it under the blood. It's gone. I'm not going to think about yesterday. And don't think about tomorrow because tomorrow for you may never come. So you handle the 24-hour period that you've been given. And you handle it to the fullest of God's call, which is to die daily to everything that is not of God so that you can allow the word of God. And it is not given to you through memorization. It's not given to you, even though knowing the word is an excellent thing because then God can easily speak to you but while you're busy memorizing thinking I'm just not retaining well it's just not working I'm, I'm not getting this spiritual being because you can't because you're trying to do it through the flesh and the spirit of God doesn't come through anything of the flesh it doesn't come through the brain the right side the left side it doesn't no mm -mm. It doesn't come through the spiritual eyes that you think you have from what you remember, from what you think that picks up. It, it doesn't come there. It doesn't come from anything to do with the flesh. It comes with God in his spirit. And he doesn't need you to... Uh, activate or do anything he doesn't need you it's all by choice 
you either choose what you know is the God in righteousness, holiness, joy, peace, understanding, wisdom, all of those fruits of the Spirit, you choose. Or you choose the flesh that makes you feel good, makes you uh, seek out, makes you search, makes, makes you go to science, makes you go to, to medic, medical, uh, looking up and Googling what this symptom means, what that, oh, you need to know every detail. No, you don't. There is only one person that you need to know every detail to, and his name is Jesus Christ. Now, there's people called in the medical world, which is science. And, oh my goodness, there are so many tremendous, great, and good doctors. Uh, and, and they are true believers. And there are so many that aren't, that will fight you tooth and nail to prove to you that science has the upper hand. There's a a lot of nurses and work in the medical field that way that that don't have any care for anybody but themselves and making money. So therefore, if you live or die, they don't care. So therefore, if you have somebody that doesn't care, they can misjudge, misunderstand, do the wrong thing. And so therefore, when you when if you have to go anywhere, pray, pray that Everything be guided by God. You prepare for it. If you have a child and they need to go to the doctor, you pray that you find the right one that will know everything that that child needs. Protect them. Don't, don't just, well, I'm going to go to the doctors. Protect them in prayer. If, if you want them to go to school, protect them. Make sure that school isn't teaching things that it not not to be. And I'm telling you today, Public schools are a bad place to be for many because they are teaching the children opposite of what the Christian is teaching. And so if you want your child to be raised in Christ and understand things in Christ, then you need to homeschool. I knew that 40 years ago when they were trying to push all of this stuff that they're pushing now. They were striving to push it 40 years ago. And they couldn't even make a headway. But when they got their foot into the government door control, because you see, the whole thing about going to a Christian school was to make sure the government had no power over what the choices they made. Because a lot of Christian schools, they allowed the government to come in to give them funds. So they were really under the control of the government. And what the the people who had children where they homeschooled them, those children grew up to be tremendous human beings. But it took a sacrifice for the mother and father for them to take the time to be the preacher, the teacher, <laughs> everything to that child, the caregiver, the, the caregiver, everything. And so Right now, more than anything, I, I'm thinking about a particular child that the Lord laid on my heart this morning. And she was beautiful. And she was five years old when she stood behind in back of the church and she said, uh, people, listen to me. Jesus can heal you. He healed me. And as she gave that little testimony, the power of God was on her. But you take that little girl and you put her into a public school, which teaches everything against what God wants to teach them. If you don't know what they're doing, they are in danger. If you don't make it your business to know what is being taught in that classroom, you're in danger. And if you are in a place where I work for the church and I'm helping this one, so God will take care of it. No, he won't. He can't. She's your responsibility. You need to draw that, that child in. And if I was in your shoes, I would homeschool. 
And here's what I'm going to say to you. If you're out there evangelizing and your child is left up to teachers that aren't even believers, you've got a problem with God. If you, I don't care how much you teach them at home. I don't care how much you pray. If you put them in the hands of any predator, simply because you want the time to go and do this that you love to do and that that you love to do when you need to be home teaching them. That you're putting your children in danger. Now, some say, well, I, you know what? Well, I, I don't know how to homeschool. I would have to learn myself. I don't know how to do this. I don't know. How. Well, you know what? I didn't either. I didn't know how to teach or preach anything. I had to learn as I went along. And and this is and you have to do that. You have to make sure you understand what you're doing. So if you have any friends that you know you can trust that want their children safe, get a group. Get a group together and discuss. Maybe one of you knows how to teach. So one of you can have your own little classroom with all of the mothers there. Not, no, never leave your child. Go to a home when you're not there. I'm telling you, it's an evil day. Don't ever let your child, whether it's a boy or a girl, go across the street to play. Because across the street, you don't know what's going on. I said, well, yeah, I prayed, God will protect. No, 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 no. If you don't have enough discernment to know to protect your child, you don't have enough discernment. You can say, well, I go and investigate. I don't care how you investigate. Predators get along with everybody. Children just love them. That's predators. Because they know that you're so tied up and so busy doing your own thing. All they've got to do is pay a little bit of attention to your child and they got them. They can lie to them. They can harm them. They can do anything because you're too busy. Who is going to answer for the responsibility of your child? Do you think the neighbor is going to? No. If I was in your shoes, I would make sure that either mother or father was with them. I'm going to give you an example. Not too long ago, <laughs> I needed some help in the house. And I met a lovely young 13-year-old, I think she was, and her little brother. They were just so sweet. I kept them on the back porch so that mother could see out the window that those children were not in my home. I will never let a child into my home without mother or father. So what I wanted to do and was thinking about was giving that little girl a job if the mother or the father would come and sit right there and watch them do the job because I'm going to be 80 and there's certain jobs that are too big for me. Now, I can pay a housekeeper, a, a house cleaner, but why not give a summer job to a child to do one job at a time? Maybe I can hand her $20 and she could make $20 and put that into her savings for whatever she wants or needs for school, for different dresses, different whatever. It's a way of helping her, but I couldn't do it. I could not get her mother to come and visit me and talk to her. And I would never sit down and talk to that child. All I could do with that child was say, have your mother get in touch with me. That was all. And the mother never did. So, you know, they might think, well, because I'm a preacher, I want to indoctrinate them. I want to preach. I, I don't do that. I don't force myself on anybody. I don't, when you come to my home, if you, pick up the subject about God, then we can talk about it. But if you don't, I'll give you a testimony perhaps, uh, depending on how God leads, but there's someone I don't, I don't even talk to. So what I was trying to say to you is, uh, never let 
a child into your home. I don't care how much you trust that friend. Don't let them go anywhere like that. Say, well, they have friends that you don't know. I am telling you, you don't know how the enemy uses little children. They've proven it. Little children, they literally recruit for that predator. And, and they make friends. So you have to really know God and hear his voice to protect your children. This is a very basic lesson. You need to sit your child down and, and talk to them, not as a friend, but as somebody that loves them. When you love your child, your child knows it. You can't fool them. When you're too busy for them, they know you have no feelings for them whatsoever. When something is important to them, they know that you're not the one to go to. They're going to go to someone else because they, they're human. They're not going to choose that someone else over you because they don't love you. They're going to do it because they need a release and you won't give it to them. So, uh, you know, this is what I suggested to one woman that had two children. I said, you know, you've got a jealousy going on there. So why don't you just take that older one and sit her down and say, all of this with between you and me, we'll, we'll have a mommy time. When your little sister's sleeping, let's have a mommy time. Or daddy, let's have a daddy time where just daddy interacts with the little girl. Uh <laughs> But you have to really know, Daddy, you have to really know what's going on there. Because a lot of people, they get these strange, funny feelings, and they think, oh, when you think that, God's talking to you. Because certain doors are not locked to keep the, the robber out. They're lo locked to keep the honest person honest. Because if an honest person who is in, has got a problem financially walks by a car and sees the door open and sees a purse, he may be tempted to open up that door and take that purse. Whereas the robber, he's going to get into the door no matter what. So you don't tempt that person. You make sure you don't leave a purse in an open car door. But what I'm saying to you is, is there are certain things in your own home. Well, the fashion is, and during that time, uh, to go braless. The fashion is you wear bikinis. So at the age of 12 and 13 years old, little girls are dressing like that. Little girls at the age of 15 are bouncing around men because it's okay. Society does that. You'll see them walking on the street. Their big fat bellies hanging out and their breasts all undone and just flimsy clothing on. And they're just enjoying life because they're getting attention from people who shouldn't even be looking at them. But you allow that in your home and you don't want to fight with them. Well, I made certain rules in my house. You either obey them, and if you don't obey them, and you're too big for me to spank, God can spank you and teach you the lessons of life. But if I tell it to you, and you sit them down, and you tell them kindly and nicely, this isn't the way a Christian acts. That's not the way they dress. I know one young lady, lady she bounced around. I, I, I was at her home. She bounced around braless and she was big breasted and she showed her uncle everything and she showed everybody everything and her mother was patting her on the back and everything was just fine. Well, that was her house. So she come to my house and she was going to flop her breasts around my house. And whenever she came to the door and I told her the truth, I said, no one passes through this door unless they're properly dressed. I will not, if I had a brother, you, he, I don't want him to see your body. If I, my, if my husband would be home, I don't want him to see your body. And me, I don't want to be subject to your naked body. So you're not welcome. Oh, she got angry. And she went, 
ran to mommy and told mommy, and mommy came over and read me the riot act because I stopped the daughter at the door. And she said, you can't do that. And I'm getting a lawyer and I'm, I'm this and I'm that. And fine. Have at it. <laughs> I wasn't worried because that little girl had a mother who had no brains whatsoever. That little girl later on in life had two children by two different uh, uh, men that weren't even her husband. And she came knocking on my door fully dressed. And she asked me if I would pray with her for her and her children. She wanted to give her life to Christ. She was no longer acting like that. But at the same time, she still, she still didn't want to really find God. She wasn't ready yet. And I knew it. And at that time, my daughter had come that day to visit and she knew my daughter real well. And my daughter, and this is all oh, years ago. My daughter's, uh, lived in a townhouse in Pittsburgh. And she had worked very hard, went to college, did all the stuff she needed to do. And she, she met that young girl that she knew the kind of life that girl lived. And the, and the girl said to her, Oh, we'll just crash at your place. And my daughter looked at her straight in the eye and said, No one crashes at my place. No one is welcome to do that at my place. I work too hard to have a townhouse in Pittsburgh in order for somebody to just come and do whatever they want. And that little girl like got a wake up call. I mean, we're talking about people uh, that nobody ever gave them and fed them common sense. So that little girl, and I call her little, because she was probably in her 20s, maybe even pushing 30. And to me, that's a little. <laughs> so anyway, I did set her down. I did pray with her. I did lead her to Jesus Christ. And I I couldn't, you know, I, I couldn't take her in or anything. Uh, she was not my responsibility. I had a husband that I had to think of too. So at that time, I had to leave her go and leave her in God's hands and help her to find a place where she could uh, interact with Christians so that she could get the help that she needed to stay on track which is very similar to what I do now with people because I pray with them until they get on track with God. And if at any time they need any help, they call me. But really, I teach them how to go to God and how to hear God and how to talk to him about their problems and how to work them out with him because you don't need me. Nobody needs me. That little girl didn't need me. God had a hold of her, a hand on her. Nobody needs me for guidance or anything. I'm not here for that. What I'm here for is to open up the door to the truth. For God to be able to open up your heart and mind for you to hear the truth. And this truth is about your children. This truth is how to protect them. How to make sure you don't let them, you, you teach them how to dress properly at this age, at five years old, you teach them how to handle life, really, when they're young. Understanding in life on how to live doesn't start when they're a teenager. By that time, their hormones are raging, and they have no understanding for nothing. Emotionally, if you've pushed them out of your life and lived your own life, because you used, and, and they used to do this often, use the schools as a dumping ground 
I'm telling you, it comes back to bite you. But if you have, and, and you wind up praying, saying, pray for me, my daughter's doing this or my uh, son is doing that because you busied yourself with other things. And you have to take that before God and ask God to forgive you for that and then give you the wisdom to bring them back, to bring them to where they need to be. And sometimes that wisdom is a zippered mouth and a show of love. But it's up to you to find out what path you should take. It's up to you to discern and understand. Not for me. You don't need me. How do you do it? You go into the Bible and you find Jesus Christ, especially in the Gospels. Especially watch him. Listen to him. Die to what you thought was this doctrine. If I didn't have this doctrine, I, I'm going to perish. They tell me I'm going to. No, no man can tell you. If you let Jesus Christ in here or here, and you're reading about a man that loves you, and you take your sin before him, you tell me how a man could tell you because you didn't go to their church and you didn't follow their doctrine, you're going to hell. No man can put you in hell. Don't you understand that? No man could predict hell for you. No man can condemn you because you did. You were not the Christian they thought, they felt, they believed you're supposed to be. Why do you think so many people go before God by themselves? But in doing that, it's not enough if you do not allow your life to be under the blessing of God. Line up to the blessing through obedience. This is what we're talking about. So if you have little children and you feel like they tug on you here for this and tug, I told you, I knew of a woman who had held down two jobs, homeschooled, kept a beautiful clean house, had supper every night for her husband after work. She handled everything. She started out when I say two jobs, she had her own business, plus she helped someone else's business out. And and she was able, by the grace of God, to handle everything. She, taking her children in hand and homeschooling, she has two beautiful adults now. So... I'm only saying to you when you say, well, I just don't have time. I just, well, then you better sit down and talk to God about your time. Before you make any big decisions to do anything, get alone with God. Let him lead you into the scriptures. Ask him to open up your heart and your mind to accept what he's saying to you. Some people think that they are called to control the world. Like the people that will say, well, you know, they support LGBT. And because they do, I won't shop there. They should have looked in the scriptures and see what Paul the Apostle said about separation. He said, I don't tell you to separate from the world because your needs go out into the world. So if you're in business and you're supposed to bake a cake for everybody, you can't discriminate and say, I cannot bake it for you because I don't believe you are a couple. When you know what? That's not your business. Your business is you went into the business of baking cakes and putting on them whatever you're given to do. Now, if it's offensive to you, all right, you can you can tell them that, well, I find offense, explain why or whatever. And if they still insist, you 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 can do something in prayer about it. But you don't need to say, well, I'm this and I'm I'm you know, listen to what I'm telling you. If you know a certain store supports a certain thing, every product in there doesn't. So you can go and buy some clothing or whatever and or buy some food and because maybe that's the only one that's down the street. 
And if you're not a witness in kindness, who's going to be? Now, I'm not telling you just you have to buy where these people. I'm not. Please, don't twist my words. Don't twist me and say, well, Marion Lynch says. No, she didn't. And uh, there are people that do that with my videos and say, well, Marion Lynch says this. Why you do that? I have no idea. But you shouldn't take things. That's like taking the Bible out of context. You take my messages out of context and do what you want to with them. Use them the way you want to in order to do what you want, what you think. And that's not dying to self. That's taking things out of context, which you're free to do. That's your, you know, I can only say how that, that that's up to you. Do whatever you want. But what I want you to know is this. Children are in danger because of parents' disobedience. Running to the church, doing everything for the church, and leaving and deserting their own homes. And they think that's God. You're going to answer for it. Understand that. You're going to answer. You've got to get on your knees and talk to God and search in the word to see what direction to go for your children to keep them safe from the influences of this world. It's your responsibility. It's not mine. It's not someone else's. It's not the churches. It's not the people. It's not the neighbors. It's you. If you're foolish enough to just let your children go anywhere and do anything and you never raise them to have respect for their bodies that nobody can touch them, to have respect for other people's bodies that you don't, you, you teach that when they're little. And it's easy to teach. They grow up that way. You teach different things, but you don't have any common sense to teach. Jesus Christ is filled with common sense. And one of the things about common sense is dress properly, modestly. Oh, but their peers, they'll say, well, you know what? If you're homeschool, you don't have any peers. You have, maybe if you get a group together that wants to see their children, but don't leave them alone. Make sure there's always somebody there. Make sure you're there. Like I said, I never put my arms around any child to hug them or to hold them, ever. I don't touch children unless their parents are right there and that baby or that child wants to hold me and the parents smile and say, it's okay. That's fine. I get nieces and all of them, the grandchildren, they all love me. That's wonderful. But even them. I do not do those things. I have standards of how my behavior is with children, how my behavior is with adults. There's certain things I don't do, and there's certain things that I can't do. Your standards have to be higher than those that are in the world. Your standards, they have to see a difference. Not by what you say, but how you live. How can your children grow up with higher standards if you don't have any? Uh, it's, it's, it just, it just won't work.